Hi, I'm Alex, and welcome to Super Make Something, the show where I make something cool and show you how to make it too. Today, we'll be making this three-dimensional CNC drink coaster using Autodesk 123D Make. Let's get started. Like many of my projects, this one begins in CAD software. I began by making a rectangle with dimensions that roughly correspond to the desired size of the coaster. I then inserted a 1cm deep circular recess into this rectangle. The recess has a diameter that is slightly larger than a coffee mug. I then added additional extrusions and fillets, or rounded edges, to the rectangle to give it an interesting shape. Once I was satisfied with the look of the coaster, I exported the model as an STL or stereo lithography file. STL files describe CAD objects using triangular meshes and are most commonly used in graphics and 3D printing applications. I next imported the STL file into 123D Make. 123D Make is a free software package that slices STL files into layers that can be cut out of flat sheets of material and assembled into three-dimensional shapes. The coaster slices will be cut out of 5.2mm thick plywood using a CNC machine with an eighth inch diameter bit. To make sure that the slots in each layer will be the right size to allow the parts to interlock, I first created a new material defining the length, width, and thickness of my plywood sheet, and specified the diameter of the CNC machine's cutting bit. Next, I verified that the object size reported by 123D Make matched the object size reported by the CAD program. 123D Make offers several different construction techniques, which can be selected from the drop-down menu on the left side of the window. I chose to use the Curve option, which parses the STL file into interlocking slices. At this point, I began playing with the options that specify the number of slices and the slice angle until I was happy with the overall look of the coaster. The slicing output can be seen on the right side of the program window, which reports the number of parts, the required number of sheets as defined by the material size, and whether any slicing errors exist. Slicing errors occur if a layer cannot be cut or if a layer intersects with another layer. These errors are shown in red. I continued to fine-tune the model until all slicing errors were eliminated. 123D Make then outputs an animation showing how to assemble the coaster. Once I verified that everything looked correct, I exported the slices as a PDF file. To make the slices in the PDF file compatible with the CNC machine's CAM software, it's necessary to convert them to SVG files using Inkscape. I first import the PDF into Inkscape by going to File, Import. Double-clicking on the PDF opens a pop-up dialog that allows me to select which page of the file I would like Inkscape to load. After importing the PDF, it is necessary to manually erase the bounding box surrounding all the slices and the letters printed on each slice, as these are too small for the CNC machine to cut. Do this by manually selecting the unwanted elements and using the delete key on your keyboard. After this, resize the Inkscape canvas to make sure that none of the slices will be cut off when exporting the file, and save the drawing as an SVG file by clicking on File, Save. Repeat this for the remaining sheets in the PDF. Now it's time to cut the pieces on a CNC machine. To generate the G-code that tells the CNC machine how to cut out each piece, I used Easel, a free online CAM program. I first imported the SVG file into a new project. From here, I modified the material size to match the length and width of the plywood, and set the material thickness slightly higher than the plywood's actual thickness to make sure that the parts would be cut out completely. Next, I selected each of the imported objects and set the cut style to on path, which will cause the center of the bit to move along the object path while cutting. Clicking show tool paths displays how the bit will move while cutting the material. After verifying that everything looked correct, I clicked carve. At this point, Easel prompted me to mount the plywood in the machine, set the CNC home position, and turn on the spindle, after which the machine started cutting. The CNC machine interprets a set of instructions, called G-code, that describes how the cutting tool needs to move through the material in order to cut out a desired shape. The G-code generated by Easel is first sent to a microcontroller. The microcontroller reads this G-code and sends commands to a set of stepper motors, which causes the motor shafts to turn clockwise or counterclockwise. Each motor shaft is connected to one of three gantries to which the cutting tool is mounted. One gantry moves forward and backward, one moves left and right, and one moves up and down. As they move together, the cutting tool moves through the material and cuts out the desired shape. Time to sand, stain, and assemble the coaster. In total, the CNC machine cut nine parts. I first carefully sanded the edges of each finished piece using a fine grit sandpaper. I then applied a thin layer of wood stain to both sides of each piece. After the stain had dried, I applied two coatings of spray polyurethane to both sides of each piece, leaving each coat to dry for 12 hours before applying the next coat. When the polyurethane was completely dry, I followed the assembly steps generated by 123D Make. The end result is a three-dimensional drink coaster ready to protect your table. In addition to three-dimensional drink coasters, 123D Make can of course be used for many other projects too. If you have any cool projects that you've made with 123D Make, please share them with me in the comments below. 
Thanks for watching. Now go super make something. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more videos. To keep up with the latest episodes, click the subscribe button below. You can also check out all of my other videos by clicking on the video to the right and follow me on Twitter at SuperMakeSMTHNG. See you next time. Now go super make something.